Ah, oh, I just locked myself out of the house. And I can't even take my truck. I'm pretty much blocked in by my own car. Anyways, I'm gonna be going to Harbor Freight to pick up a new tool. And then after that, I'm gonna be headed to Home Depot to pick something else up and then come back home to start on my project. I just love Harbor Freight and I got the ultrasonic cleaner. Now I'm gonna be on my way to Home Depot. Here we are back in the garage with everything I bought this morning. And on this video, I'm gonna be focusing on rebuilding my carburetors. You can see some of the hardware here is loose because I took it to Ace Hardware and I got a whole new set of nuts and bolts and everything to replace that. And then I also got a new set of carburetor repair kits. Man, so I just took the carburetors out and I think I found out why this was leaking so much. Because it looks like for some reason, the idle, uh, what is that called? The um, pilot jet, it's supposed to look like this, like thread it in there just like that. But for some reason, I'm missing it and I can't remember if or when I even took this out. I can't imagine that just flying out, but for some reason, I'm missing it. Unfortunately, that's not included in the rebuild kit here. I do have these other carburetors. These are, let's see, 32, 34, PDSIT 3 and 2. Instead of the pilot jet, it has this idle valve cutoff, whatever. And I don't want to use that for mine, so I'm going to have to figure out a solution to find one. That actually wasn't even too bad. I just got back from the Volkswagen shop and got myself another one. If it'll focus, whoa! I have both valves here installed on both carburetors. This is the new one. And you can see here how much it shakes and how much space there is on the threads. And I feel like that's probably why this original one backed out. So I have to be mindful when I put those on. I think I'm gonna put on this gas Teflon tape. Okay, so I've taken a bunch of pictures of both carburetors just so I can reference them in the future when I'm gonna be ready to reassemble. This was actually really, really loose. Yeah, this carburetor was all over the place. So one of the things I'd learned about these carburetors after I had rebuilt this was this whole choke system here. So this choke, when it's hot or cold, will turn this arm here, which will open and close this choke on the top. But living in California, it's pretty much always hot or at least pretty warm. So I never really bothered hooking this up. But if I wanted to, I technically could hook it up, but it wasn't even gonna work because of the way I had rebuilt this in the past. So I repainted everything and 
I did not realize that this whole shell here actually needs to ground out to this carburetor. And in order for that to ground out, it needs to have clear contact from metal on this plate here onto this side of the choke. And then on top of that, this bolt here will thread in into this part of the carburetor and then ground itself out onto the carb. But because I painted this plate here, there was no way that this was gonna conduct onto the body. So yeah, even if I plugged it in, it wasn't gonna work. I think this time around, I may just shave this paint off. I know I'm still not gonna plug it in, but at least it'd be nice to know that these will still work if I wanted them to, but kind of low priority right now. Yep, the bottom of this carburetor was completely loose. I also don't know if I'm doing this in the right order, if there is an order, whatever. As long as I put it back together, it should be fine. I probably should take that off. Here's the plunger. This was brand new. I don't see any issues with this being bad, but I might as well replace everything. All right, top is separated from the bottom. So I can remember how to put this together. This rod, this washer, the spring, the washer, the metal plate for this plunger thingy, another washer, and then a cotter pin. All right, this is removed. The spring goes here on top of this float. The float looks like it's in pretty good shape. And there is some gas in there. I'm just gonna pour that out real quick. You can see on the inside, kinda right there, I need to stick this flat head and take out that valve. This is the idle screw, I think is what it's called. Some gasket is still here. This top one here is just this valve. When I first got this carburetor, this was actually missing. It was just a hole here. So I've read on the forums that some people actually just JB weld on a dime. It's very close to the diameter that you need. I didn't want to do that. So I actually found these little pieces of aluminum that somebody machined and I just kind of shoved it in there. I don't know exactly what that's supposed to do. Something with the pressure or something on the choke. I don't know, but it's supposed to be covered. So, so if you have these carburetors, take a look underneath or maybe you can even just feel underneath without taking out the carburetor if there's a hole. If there is a hole and you don't know where to find this, yeah, just use a dime. Otherwise, you can probably find these on Samba. 
I think these were shipped from somewhere in Belgium. I don't know. So I think that's everything that needed to get taken apart from this first carburetor. So I'm gonna spend some time and just kind of brush things up and clean everything up. And then I'm gonna throw everything into that ultrasonic cleaner. Both carburetors are now taken apart. Pretty straightforward. I didn't really see anything that was too concerning. I should have everything. I don't think there was anything that was really missing besides the missing pilot valve or whatever it's called, pilot jet. But I got that replacement, so we should be good to go. I have my ultrasonic cleaner set up here. And I also have the Simple Green D. They suggest using this one instead of the regular Simple Green. I think that should be enough to make sure the carburetor is fully submerged. I'll just put a little bit more. I'm just gonna toss everything in there and fish it out later. And that should be everything. I'm gonna set this for a few minutes. And turn the heat on. So that's 480 seconds, however many minutes that is, eight minutes or whatever. I'm just gonna let that run and check it out afterwards. Actually, I'm already starting to see a little bit of dirt and grime coming up right here. It's really hard to focus on there. And you may actually have a hard time hearing me because of the ultrasonic cleaner. But I'm just gonna leave that on there and let that cook a bit. The second carburetor is now loaded up into the cleaner and the first one is all in my water bucket. So I'm going to take these out to the back and kind of clean them up a little bit more and then dry it up and then get them prepped for reassembly. Alright, so I have the first carburetor cleaned up. The second carburetor is soaking in the water right now. So while that's soaking, I'm gonna start to assemble the first one. The cleaner made it look really, really nice, but I mean, it was already pretty clean to begin with, so it's not really super, super surprising. So I have the kit here, and I'm just gonna lay out everything in this kit. And there's a bunch of seals here or gaskets that I'm probably not even gonna use. So I'm for sure gonna use this round one. One of these guys, let me compare it with the old one. Looks like I used this one here and this one here. Everything else, I think they're for a different kind of carburetor because this kit covers a couple other different designs, but these are the ones that I'll be needing. That, this one, and a few things from this baggie here. So let's see, where do I begin? And then the second one here is kind of tricky. You have to use really, really small needle nose pliers to hold that. This, I think they call a Venturi or something like that. I think it's supposed to meter how much airflow goes in. The spring here goes there, and then the new diaphragm goes in just like that, and this one over the diaphragm. All right, that's all fitted. I'm gonna torque these down later. Up here at the top is the needle valve. I think that's what it's called. And there's a washer here. I don't know if this baggie has, oh, it does. Okay, good. There's a washer here, which I think is that silver one. There's a little, little screw that I removed here. So I'm just making sure I put that back in. This plug here has a replacement gasket and I think it's the red one. And then the pilot jet 
I'm just gonna put a little bit of this gas Teflon tape. I put a few layers in there and I'm just gonna make sure I chop off this bottom end because there is a hole here and I wanna make sure that's not blocked. I think that's pretty much everything on the bottom and the top. Time for this gasket. Again, this is the old one here, so just a good idea to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I actually don't know if I'm supposed to use some kind of Loctite. Maybe, I don't know. Um, maybe I put a little bit. That should be okay. That's kind of a lot actually. All right, top is assembled. Now to install the bottom end right here. I didn't get a chance to get new hardware to replace these two at the bottom. I'll probably do that in the future. Okay, so this assembly is pretty much put together. Now just to install all the little pieces. This one here is the air valve thing that goes here. There's these two springs. I think it took the longer spring. I think. I don't know. Oh well. I'm just gonna bottom it out all the way and back it out. I think people do like two, two and a half turns out. Down over here is the idle screw and it's gonna take this other spring. So it's this rod, a small washer, the spring, the big washer, this plate, the other big washer, and a cotter pin. And then this other rod here goes through that, through that, this washer on top, and then this nut, and then this clip. Earlier I talked about wanting to shave down the paint here, but you know what? I don't even really have plans to plug this in anyways, so I'm just gonna throw this back in knowing that this is not gonna be functioning. If in the future for some reason I want this to turn on, I'm gonna have to just take this out. I don't need to disassemble the entire carburetor then. In the future, if I do need to do it, I'll only need to take out these three bolts here. So here, technically I'm supposed to put this along here, but Again, I already know it's not gonna work, so I can kind of just put it in wherever I want. That looks good. And that's pretty much it. I just have to torque everything down, make sure everything's all back, and then get started on the second carburetor. And here we have it. We have both carburetors now completely reassembled. All the hardware and all the seals and gaskets are all replaced. Even this valve here was all replaced as well. Everything's all really clean. Now, the last things I need to do is just finalize the settings here, here, this idle screw here, over here too. But the only way for me to actually do that is with these installed on the engine and the engine running. So I'm gonna throw these back on and maybe I can get it started. Both carburetors are reinstalled back onto the engine. The fuel hoses are all hooked up, everything's all torqued down. I have the engine hooked up to a battery source. Okay, a couple things before I get this started. I've hooked up all my sensors to my separate battery here because the engine's gonna be running off of that power bank thing there. So I have my sensors here for the oil temp and the oil pressure. This is gonna be the cylinder head temperature and I also hooked up the tachometer. I hope it doesn't matter because technically I'm supposed to wrap that on cylinder one, but I wrapped it on cylinder three instead. I think it should be okay. Also, I wired up my remote start key fob here. So I'm going to use this here, but I won't really get into how I wired it up. I'll probably do that in another video. I set D for the starter motor. So I'm just going to run the starter motor just so I can get some fuel pressure and oil pressure.
looks like we have a lot of fuel pressure. Oil pressure, I think we're gonna be okay. All right, power to the ignition. Now the starter. smoothly well not so smooth i do still have to do a little bit of fine tuning on both the carburetors i think uh just the idle screws and this air mixture valve thingy whatever so i'm gonna need to do a little bit of research on that they do kind of go over the procedure on those instructions which i can't find right now where is it where is it oh it's over here Here, so there's some instructions here for adjusting the twin carbs. So I'll probably play around with that a little bit. And once this is running nice and smooth, finally, I should be ready to continue with the project. I think what I really need to do is take off that transmission. So I think that's what the next episode is gonna be, is removal of the transmission. All of that I've already done in the past. I just kind of want to get back down under there because it's kind of leaking a lot. You can see right there. So there's a, quite a bit of things I need to take care of on that transmission before I can even throw this engine back in. So thanks for following along guys, I'll see you on the next one.